When a user wants to visit a website, he opens a browser of his choice, enters the address of the site he wants to visit and hits return. Pretty simple. Or is it? What the user does not get to see is the nearly unbelievable process that is happening in the background, since visiting a website is not that simple after all. It all starts with the fact that you do not actually visit a website. In reality, a copy of the site you want to view is downloaded and then displayed by your browser. This copy is usually retrieved from a server, a computer located anywhere in the world, holding the original of the entire site. It is the server's job to listen for requests and sending copies of files and websites to inquiring devices. Therefore, the first step that happens when somebody opens a website is that a request has to be sent to the server in charge. Just like with real mail, the request is wrapped in a packet, which carries a whole lot of information about the request. And just like in real life, the packet must be addressed. But where should it be sent? Naturally, addresses cannot be composed of street names and house numbers on the internet. Computers are only able to understand binary signals after all. Those signals are commonly represented by a series of zeros and ones. Every device has its very own binary address, consisting of zeros and ones, a so-called IP address. But even when converted to our usual number system, IP addresses are nothing that is easy to read for humans. Not to mention that people want and have to memorize important addresses. For this reason, a layer of abstraction was created, in order to hide those unreadable addresses from the users, by making it possible to use words as addresses. These human-readable addresses are called domains. When somebody enters google.com in the web browser, the binary address that corresponds to this domain must be figured out. This is achieved by sending the request to the internet service provider. They host a domain name server, or short, DNS. This server is responsible for finding the IP addresses the domain is assigned to. Now our packet with the request can be correctly addressed and sent to the server. Here, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or short, HTTP is used. This protocol determines exactly in which way the communication between the devices should happen. Therefore, such requests are also called HTTP requests. The packet goes on its way to the corresponding server and usually passes a huge number of different servers, networks, states and countries before reaching its destination. There, the server receives the packet and prepares everything to respond to the request. In order to do so, it first has to find out what data or which site exactly is requested. Then, the correct content is gathered and prepared for our browser. Sometimes, this can be achieved by just loading some files, when the site consists of static content only. Quite often, however, the server has to do complex calculations when figuring out the net salary, or retrieve data from a database when the most recent sports results are to be displayed. Since the response can be made up of a great amount of data, like images, text, video and a whole lot more, it is usually too big to be sent as a single huge packet of data. Therefore, the website is split up into many little packets of data. Every single one of them goes on its way back to the user. Doing so, they may take completely different routes. As long as all of them reach their destination, the site can be reassembled and displayed by the browser. The displaying part works because all websites are made up of a combination of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. These are no languages most people can understand, but all internet browsers in the world can handle them. They interpret the code for us and display them in a way that allows us to see the website how they are supposed to be seen. Of course, the code is not destroyed during this process. Therefore, we can view the code a website is made up of at any time. In most popular browsers, this function can be found by executing a right click on the site and then choosing View Page Source. To sum it up, when visiting a website, a request for the required data is created. Then, the DNS figures out what IP address corresponds to the entered domain and the packet can be sent there in the form of an HTTP request. There, the server receives the packet and processes the request. The requested data is prepared for us in the form of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This data is transmitted to our browser, but would be unreadable for most people. It is the browser's task to interpret the HTML, CSS and JavaScript and display it for us.